There's a lot of crazy secrets and shortcuts in rocket racing. Some are riskier than others, and some will just become the normal route for most players. Today, I'll be showing every shortcut in the game. I've done a deep dive into every single track in the game from novice all the way to expert, so there will likely be some useful information for you somewhere in here. Keep in mind, many of these shortcuts are situational, and a lot of them sacrifice buildup of turbo. You'll have to experiment with each shortcut and get a feel for when you should use them. I'll have all the timestamps in the description for every course if you have a specific track in mind, but I also discuss certain tech that can be used in certain races, like chain drifting, which carries your drift into multiple opposite turns. There's a lot to show in this one, so I hope you guys enjoy the deep dive. Expect more experimental vids like this in the future, but now onto the shortcuts. Let's get right into it. All right, with day drifting, it's a pretty basic map. Uh, there isn't really much that we can do to shortcut this one. Uh, but the only thing I will discuss on this map is things like this, where you're going around the corners. There are some edges where if you have enough turbo or you're not trying to build up turbo, you can skip things like this. There's a lot of space over here to go across. Um, I won't talk about this m in much in future levels, but it's just something to keep in, keep in mind to explore. You can see here, you can go around here, but there are some deceptive corners like here. There's not much room we have to work with. But it's always something to think about. And you also have to also keep track of the fact that these green uh, portals are the things you need to go through in order to continue through the race. You can't skip these. Um, I would say that they've overused these in certain races to the point where uh, you can't really get away with as much as I would like to with some of the shortcuts. Uh, but yeah, just keep in mind that on any of these corners, you could always use some sort of jumping skip. Uh, I won't talk about those in the future levels. Just so, something to keep in mind, uh, always to look out for these around these little edges. If you ever need to beat somebody or at the last second of a race, um, it's always important just to keep that in mind. Like this, you can flip around. Obviously, I died there, but you can you can do some interesting stuff where fl you fly around the corner. Anyway, on to the next one. All right, up next, we have Bone Cavern 1. This is the first one in the novice tracks. Uh, we'll see in the future track of this in Bone Cavern 2 that you can do some sort of downwards flips to get the uh, boosters. Once again, uh, nothing really special with this map. A lot of these novice tracks are really kind of basic, and there's not much. But always just keep in mind that it's always faster to drift to keep up that speed. Um, but yeah, there's mostly straightaways. Um, to go through here So it's all just about, about keeping your speed up as fast as you can um, I tried going up here and this is not really gonna do much because uh, Unfortunately, you have to go through this green thing. That's what I'm talking about a lot of a lot of fun little track Situations where you could go through and skip but unfortunately you have to go through this this portal here I did a lot of digging in this. I even tried going up on this bone right here and then flying up um, To get inside there, which I did get in there. You know, what? I'm gonna do it. Like that, and then through here, and there we go. So I made it in here. I was even looking to see if there's anything crazy in here, but obviously that would not be a good way to go. Uh, but it's really fun to go through and explore some of these areas. I've went extensively into all these maps and made sure I could see where you could go. I mean, like, this is... Oh, uh, okay, yep, there we go. Perfect. I think it's PB. All right, up next we have Curvy Canyon 1 out of 2. And once again, with part 1 out of 2 maps, they're kind of bare bones. There's not really a lot going on. Um, I did say I wasn't going to mention it, but you can do those skips around the corners if you ever need to. It's um, not always faster. Oh, it's always just like you got to get a feel for it and test those out. Um, but as we go through here, you can see it pretty straightforward map. There's not much to do here. I don't actually think there's any skips if I can remember correctly. Um, but it's always important to think about. I think there's like, yeah, there's nothing. Never mind. It's always important to think about when you're going to want to use straightaway boost and stuff. Um, and I would say that at least for this track, You'd want to save a boost and make sure you have a turbo uh, for not this part, but the part right afterwards, the most important, especially at the end of the race. You want to make sure at the end of the race, you're kind of matching up your turbo to the very end of the race. So right here, you want to be able to get your last turbo and then use it for this last little stretch. But yeah, there's not really any shortcuts in these ones. Uh, it's all just about uh, skill and making sure that you balance your, your drifting uh, versus your uh, speed. All right, up next we have Lazy Lake. Uh, it is uh, very much like its name, very lazy <laughs> and very easy. Uh, keep in mind, you always want to do drift around the tight corners. I don't even know why those hazards back there are even there. Obviously, you want to go for the track that has the uh, booster as well. And uh, you can go around here like this as well to go a little bit faster. Nice. Yeah, I just love the physics of this game. That's, uh, that was fantastic right there. But yeah, that's this is a very short course. I don't know why the hazards on the, are on the inside or the outside because you're always going to want to drift on the inside um, to get your boost. It's a very, very simple map. There is not much to it. Once again, this is all about skill. I don't think I ever saw this in ranked either, but that's the uh, that's the course right there. Uh, just keep your drifts tight around those corners. 
and then on that uh, on that booster to the uh, hazards in the sphere circle thing, just uh, you can jump out to the right to go a little faster. All right, welcome to Airborne One of Two. Uh, this is a very basic map as well, but there are some neat little tricks you can do um, based on how skilled you are. So right here, there's the boosters here, but you can also fly above and land here if you'd like, and then go around the corner um, nice and tight like that. That's probably the biggest time save. I would always make sure to save a turbo for this straightaway. Um, and even try to get one or two drifts on these tracks. If you can do it, I would get one here as well. And then the fastest way around here is on the outside to get a boost around the outside here. Um, and then at the same time, you want to go around this corner as tight as possible. I went under here to test some stuff. And there's some pretty funny stuff that you, you can, uh, pr pretty funny things that you can do if you go under the track like this. It can get pretty messy. Um, yep. I, I, I did a turbo here under under here earlier, and uh, <laughs> you could maybe surprise your opponents. I don't know, like just pop out of the. Yep, nice. Yep, look at this. Perfect. All right, welcome to Anarchy Arches One of Two. Uh, this map is also pretty basic, but there are a couple little spots where you might be able to get an edge on your t uh, your opponents. Um, most of it's just straightaways, though. You want to make sure you have boost for the straightaways. Um, but there is a little fancy thing you can do with the tunnel on this level. Um, there's not too many tight turns, and honestly, you probably want to use this space to get boost anyway. So once again, a straightaway here, you want to make sure you're boosting. Make sure you always have some turbo ready. Now, right here, if you're feeling risky, you can go for here on the outside. Uh, because it is the tightest turn possible, so uh, it could be useful. But at the same time, you're not going to be able to get as much turbo uh, from inside. So you can always test that on maybe your final lap if you feel like you can get one more turbo before the end of the lap. Uh, it's just a situational thing. I wouldn't always use it. Uh, and also... You obviously want to go this way, but I have tested. You can go above here. Uh, I don't know why you would, but, you know, I just thought I'd show you it anyway. I don't think it's useful. And the final one is just this is way more efficient is to fly over here like this. Then use your side flip to the right and land it on it. There's nothing under this road here, so don't worry about that. I've already looked because you just want to make sure you get these two boost pads and then boost off to the finish. And there it is. I probably want to have a turbo a little bit earlier. That way you're using the end of your turbo at the finish line. All right, welcome to Dust Up One of Two. Uh, this is one of my favorite maps as far as the uh, the second iterations of them go. Uh, but you're gonna flip down to the ground here, and you can get these corners. It uh, doesn't seem like this dust actually slows you down too much. And there's a pretty wide uh, area to shortcut here. You're always gonna want to stay on the internal part as well, so just keep your boost up. Um, I'm not trying to like speed through here, by the way. That's why I'm not doing the extra turbos every time. Uh, but also, I find that the the inner one here is a lot faster because you get two speed boosts. And then you just want to make sure you're drifting on the, on the way through here. But this is a pretty basic lap. Uh, there's also the ending here is the most important part to probably get a lot of time saved. Is to come in here like this. Uh, not hit that obviously, but stay tight to the corners. Um, always within the inside part. And then uh, boosting through this big long part. Um, then you can come down to here as early as possible. Get the drift around the corner and you're good to go. So that's pretty basic. Uh, just make sure you're turning in those tight corners. And uh, utilizing the extra boost pads. You're always gonna. I, whenever I go through these uh, courses, I always try to find the ways that I can sustain 700 uh, kilometers per hour as much as possible, or 650 at least. You can see I'm going 630, or 730, and then 750 again, and always just staying at a different, uh, at a decent speed. Um, because without without using uh, boost, you're just gonna be sitting at 570. There's also this way, but like I said, this is also not really that great because uh, there's only one boost pad up here. Uh, in a, in a tough, tougher to reach spot and being in the air is actually less efficient. So not only can you get more drift on this bottom booster here, but uh, it takes more time to get up there and you'll be a lot slower. So I would just use the ground one there I, and you're going wider. So I wouldn't use it. Uh, once again, I've always, I've done every single race here looking at the underside of any track. Uh, a lot of them just lead to nothing like this um, or really glitch you out. So I have explored quite a bit. If I miss anything, let me know. All right, welcome to Festive Falls. This is the one in the trailer uh, or the action sequence that we got to experience for a little bit. Um, not too much going on, but there are some secrets with the tunnel. Um, also, those boost pads are usually kind of bait uh, unless you feel like you can get them and keep up your speed. But the tighter corner is usually better. As you guys know, there is a way through the waterfall, which is only really good if you have a turbo. I wouldn't go through there if you don't have turbo. Um, you can go up here to get this one. But it's really not that useful because you're probably going to miss this one on the ground. So it doesn't really change much. And the fact that you can already like get a drift going into that one, um, you know, it's not really that useful. Um, it does cut the, cur the, the corner a little bit. But mostly if you're going to go this way, you're just going to want to hit both of those boost pads with this one as well. 
and then go through here. The last part you can kind of skip through is uh, on top of the tunnel, but it's a hit or miss for me. I can see why you can use it because you can cut in a little bit earlier here and go around the corner. Uh, it does, does go a little bit faster. But this I find this this that boost pad, unless you're going straight into it, doesn't really get you a good pace. And then the last spot you can go here is get um, off the side here. You see those two back there? I'll go back and show you. Hopefully it doesn't demo me. Okay, it killed me. But down here, there is a path uh, with some boost pads on the outside. So you, what you people do usually is they'll come in here tight around the top. Why did I die? Anyway, what they'll do is they'll come from this uh, from this corner here, fly down around the side, and then grab these two boost pads. It can be faster, but you have to be accurate. You have to be a little bit careful. And sometimes uh, inside, because there are boost pads on the ceiling of the tunnel, they're, they're just better to hit. Um, but it's up to you whether or not you feel you can do it and uh, whether or not you have the turbo to use that that direction. So it's all, like I said, it's all situational. I find that it's helpful um, to go through and get a good feel for both uh, kind of directions and see when it's useful for you. Uh, but this is always a safe option just to go through here and boost through the middle here and get this uh, this boost pad and then this one. It's not, it's not a horrible option. There's one at the end there I just missed, but there you go. Not too bad. All right, welcome to K2 Raceway, a very basic map uh, with some nice little like uh, turns, uh, but nothing too crazy. Um, one thing I am upset about is that there's a gate here and nothing around this whole corner. And I would have loved to have creative freedom to do like a, uh, a, a tight turn here and then maybe turbo across the corner. Um, but unfortunately this border stops you from doing a lot of that. So that's, I'm going to make a video in the future about things they could do differently to allow for players to have more creative freedom. Um, but obviously you want to hit this uh, underside here by flipping up. And then you can probably fly into this tight turn if you have a turbo. Uh, that's pretty much the only skip that maybe you could use. There's not much going on in this course at all. Um, very basic. We're already at the end. That's the whole lap. All right, that concludes the novice tracks. We're on to the advanced tracks, which gets a little more interesting, but still not super difficult. There's some really cool skips in the final expert tracks. I'm really excited to show you guys. All right, welcome to Cliff Runner 1 of 2. Uh, this one's also uh, one of those things where it's a pretty basic at the very beginning, and then Cliff Runner 2 is going to be a lot more complicated. Um, you still want to drift on these walls, by the way. Uh, I've talked about this in my own video before, where I race through here. Um, nothing too crazy with shortcuts. Just make sure you're cutting this corner. Don't cut it too sharp because you'll actually fly off right here and lose all that drift. So make sure you kind of cut it a little bit closer. I'll go back and drift a little bit uh, further down so you can see what happens uh, when you do it properly. So if you drift down here, you can get the drift out. And then make sure on this turn you don't drift into this because you can pop up like that. You can do it, but you'll lose the drift anyway. Um, but this is definitely the shortcut you want to take. Um, the way that I usually do is I flip into it um, in the corner. I'll go back around and show you how it how it can run. Hopefully that, oh, that did not take me there. So around this corner, you can usually do something like this where you flip into the direction. I see the car tries to stick with it. As far as the, this way goes, it's really whether or not you have turbo. Uh, you can get a lot more drift out here in turbo. But the other way is maybe a little bit straighter. It's kind of hard to say. I haven't really like fully figured out if this optimized. Once again, this is the turbo direction. The other way is a drift direction. It's all about whether or not you have turbo to spare. Um, and this way is a non-disputed faster way. This way up here. Um, and in the cliff runner too, it's actually quite difficult to go through this way. But this is just a much faster route because you're always you're always cutting inwards on the uh, the overall direction. But that's the whole thing. Just make sure you're doing that that left uh, direction at the end there of the fork, and uh, the rest of it's like you know kind of situational whether or not you have turbo or uh, if you need to go get more turbo uh, around the corners. All right, now on to puddle jumper one of two. This is actually an interesting situation where the first version of the map actually requires a different path altogether. I have not seen a reason on Puddle Jumper 1 to really go through this. Uh, maybe I'm crazy, but I get way more drift and way more turbo um, just keeping up this way. And I never really see anybody pass me uh, overall in the race if they take that way. Um, you know, there's not really much here, but you can do a tight turn if you'd like to. Uh, but at the same time, you can also gain a lot of drift just from taking that, that turn. Um, the undisputed uh, direction to go, though, is up here um, and then go around the corner here to get all the drift. I always beat every player going this way, always doing this tight turn and then ending the drift right, right before that hazard and then cutting the turn in really early. It's much faster. It saves me about two to three seconds compared to the other direction. Uh, but that's pretty much it. This this race 
Uh, it definitely gets way more interesting. Probably one of my favorite skips in the game on Puddle Jumper 2, but we'll get into that way later. All right, welcome to Bone Cavern 2. Uh, this is where those boost pads come into play here. It, just keep in mind, though, if you uh, it's always uh, middle and then left and right, and then middle and then left and right. Um, on that first turbo that you get off of the start of the race, though, you might be more comfortable grabbing the left and right one on the second uh, jump, if not the next middle one, because the first one's really hard to reach. You'll end up flipping into the ground. This is all just skill. You just need to fly through here. There's nothing really you can do anything differently. Um, get the boost, uh, the booster there. And once again, you have to hit this track uh, checkpoint here. So there's nothing you can really do with that. Moving into here, uh, I, you can either take the top one uh, here and get that, that boost pad up there, um, which can lead into the one up top there. But I think overall you get two here, both directions, and then you get a double on the side. Now you can either do what I just did where you jump off the wall or jump off the floor to do it. But at a decent speed, it seems like uh, just going here and, and coming at this booster, you can end up just usually flipping to the wall at the, at the right time like that. And that's the whole race. There's not much to it. Bone Cavern 2 is probably the least interesting uh, of the, uh, the second iteration of the maps. Uh, there's not too many uh, skips, but this is really important that you really do hit these. And you can only usually hit uh, two of them. You can kind of like do some crazy stuff like that that you just saw there where you really immediately press it and that's going to be taking a lot of skill and I don't know if it's like perfectly going to happen every time because there's something weird about uh, the the dashes down to the ground like this where it doesn't always work. Sometimes it ends up doing like a, a 360 flip uh, but you can try doing something like this where you uh, flip down immediately to the ground, flip down immediately but it's, it's not really, you can see it's not really consistent but it's definitely probably going to be the upper echelon of gameplay. Or people try to get all four of those all right up next is outpost uh this one is probably requiring the most skill so far for like those tiny shortcuts that you can find um but we're gonna grab some boost here um really important that you do not use a turbo here do not use a turbo it's a big mistake you're gonna want to cut this corner really tight and use several rocket uh boosts to get tighter on that corner um be careful of these trees too by the way they do have collision uh right here you're gonna want to make sure you have a turbo if you want to do this but there's a really tight turn you can do here as you can see there, you can turn around that corner, but you only, only want to do that if you haven't, uh, if you have enough for the turbo. You you would want to use that that turn to get enough drift uh, for your turbo. And then right here, I would just be careful to like land really nicely here because you can always uh, hit that wall. That's the one that I'm talking about that requires a little more skill because you can end up drifting into that wall and kill yourself. So just be a little bit careful. Obviously, don't hit that hazard. But there's this spot here you can uh, flip into and get the boost pad. That's a, pretty much the only skips. And then we're at the end here. Uh, right here, it just finishes it off. At the end of the race, you're gonna want to make sure that you have a turbo by the time you come down here, so you can boost up through here and turbo to the end of the race. Uh, but yeah, just two little skips that are kind of important to know. Um, one of them situational, the other one you always want to make. All right, welcome to Windy Way or Windy Way, which does bring up a good point that we could actually have like some pretty cool wind hazards. Uh, this little jump right there is a little bit risky. You got to make sure you don't hit the uh, the uh, the top there. Um, on top, it seems to be the best way is to go through here and get the drift along with this boost pad. Um, and then you're gonna wanna use one turbo here uh, through this area. There's not really much to do as far as skips go. There is up here, um, which does have a, uh, a booster on the side here. So you just wanna make sure you hit this and go through here. This is a little bit of an unsatisfying race, in my opinion, because you always seem to have one, uh, one too little turbo. Uh, cause right here, you'd like to have another turbo cause you used one before, um, but you just don't have it. Um, unfortunately, you do have to go around this whole thing, but I would just cut it tight. Once again, those boosts are bait. Just stay tight around this corner here um, and then go for it. And you're going to want a turbo here. And then it's sometimes nice to just fly and land here because flying, once again, does lose you a lot of speed uh, a lot faster. So using your uh, boosters in the air sometimes isn't great or your turbo in the air. Uh, you kind of want to just keep it. Uh, see, that's what happens sometimes, by the way, right there. Um, but yeah, using turbo in the air seems to drop your speed a lot faster than when you're on the ground. Um, but yeah, you can try this if, you, if you'd like to, but it's a little bit of an awkward angle. And you can get turbo here to go through. Uh, it could be, probably catch you up a little, uh, a little bit, but once again, you're losing uh, turbo for a future part of the race because now you're pretty low here for this part. All right, welcome to Pleasant Pit Stop. Look at these floating leaves, by the way. Oh, beautiful, really good there. Um, I've shown some of the secrets on this map. There's one spot I do want to show uh, that I did not hit in my original race video, uh, but you want to go underneath there to get that one boost line there or the one boost pad. Um, and it seems faster to go on the outer bit here because there's a single 
uh, boost pad you can get here. And then there are two inline boosters around this outer edge uh, up at the top part. You got to be a little careful to hit them. They're right here. However, the right side is the faster way to cut. And there is a path on the right that you can take. It really depends on how much turbo you want to get because you can use this to drift a little bit. But as far as um, cutting in the line, the right side is the best. And there also is a hidden building uh, boost pad right there that you can grab. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, and the last part uh, is to go on the outside here. Uh, and go around the corner. Now, it might not always be useful to do this this turn here, depending on how much boost you have for the turbos. And there's a boost pad line that I just missed there. Uh, but that's the whole thing there. You can use that on maybe not the first lap. It seems better maybe to use it after the first, the second lap, or uh, after the first lap's completed, because you can use that big tube to get a lot of uh, turbo for the future. Um, but yeah, you just want to make sure that even even here, if you have full turbo, you can still like flip underneath and land here. This is the only uh, booster. This whole part right here seems very unsatisfying. I wish there was some sort of booster, like maybe on this part right here or something. Um, but I don't like parts of the race where there's nothing you can do but the fact that you're going 570. Uh, other than maybe like like some drifting, but it's not great when they do an open stretch or there's nothing you can do but the speed you're going at uh, for a long time. And even here, I would maybe do a drift. But then, yeah, you can see you can get... You can get what the heck? You can usually get like some sort of speed. Uh, but be very careful. I've, I've hit this tree... On the right before I've hit this tree on the left, this will kill you um, if you're going faster. Um, and you can get caught in these trees and stuff, but just uh, be mindful. All right, welcome to Sidewinder. So this is actually a pretty uh, interesting map. It's a lot of fun with the drifting. Uh, there's not too many like actual shortcuts, but there is a little bit of a tech you can use to uh, keep your speed up for the future of the track. Um, you can turbo to the left side here across this whole open area, um, but I, I do like getting the drift on that one spot there. Uh, now, as far as the tech goes, this is where you can get a lot of drifts. Um, but an interesting thing you can do is on this this next part right here, you can keep your drift. Oh, I didn't do it right there. Sometimes it kind of fails, but you can get it uh, working most of the time. Uh, the thing you can do is actually keeping your speed uh, consistent and save your drift for the future. So like right here, I can go in here and then drift. And if you rocket drift, sometimes you keep it. I'll keep doing it until I get it right, but you can do it where you rock a drift to the other side. There we go. So you can see that right there. I actually kept all my boost for this straight away. You gotta be really careful using your boost here because you're just gonna go super fast. I've tested. You can't go outside of these tunnels. The uh, the border does close up right on it. Uh, so unfortunately, you can't do any skips like that. But honestly, this is just a, a matter of doing a lot of good uh, drifting. Um, right here is also just a good time to use uh, a turbo. But I would also try to use maybe two here if you can. Uh, if you have a good amount of turbo too, you can do this tight corner and then fly all the way to the end over these hazards. Um, there's a bit of a tight turn here as well that you can do. And there we go. But yeah, I honestly don't know how to consistently get that uh, drifting to happen where you, you do both directions and don't lose it immediately. It seems uh, like there's an intricate way you could uh, replicate it, but... For some reason during the races, I've been pretty good at like doing it so I don't just waste it. It seems like if I, oh yeah, it seems like if I maybe like cancel the drifts, uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know. It, it Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but you can try it. There it goes. It just did it. I've also had it happen where the, uh, the drift just doesn't go off. It seems to happen if I press the, like the reverse like that. Um, but yeah, interesting. You can definitely play around with that. See if you can get a consistent way. I honestly don't know how to replicate it perfectly, but sometimes it happens for me. And it's just nice to do uh, to get that full burst of speed. All right, and now we move on to the expert tracks. This is where we can really get into the interesting uh, intricate uh, skips and stuff. And there's more missed opportunities from Psyonix to really put in some interesting skips. And uh, I'll show one of them that's really upsetting to me because I really think that they could have done something cool with it. All right, Anaconda is probably one of my favorite uh, maps just because it really does showcase off a lot of nice drifting skill. Um, but there aren't very many opportunities to run turbo in this map. And you don't really need to use turbo in a lot of situations. This is all about using several rocket drifts uh, to get some nice turns. Like this one here is... Uh, you got to be really tight on the turns. Now, this is the first spot where a lot of people probably would have noticed already that there's one on the ceiling uh, for boost. But a lot of times you bonk your head and you see that red mark that happens, that right there. This is a bait. Do not use this one. It slows you down more than the boost even helps. Well, not more than it helps, but it basically balances it out. There's actually a double inline boost on the left side only, not on the right side. So what you're going to want to do is go higher than you need to and then flip down to flatten yourself out. I, I, I kind of 
not in the right line here to properly do this. So let me demo myself to get backwards like this and then go down on the, the pads here. Now, you're going to want to use most of your uh, turbos in this, this spot here. But look at this missed opportunity. I'm pretty upset about this. I saw this when I was in the laboratory. This could have been a really cool spot to have a bunch of inline pads. But the, the border actually just completely cuts you off. It's just the corner of death. So really, really unfortunate. Because look at the way the uh, the temple actually just... Oh gosh, I pressed the wrong button. Look at the way the temple lines up with the track right here. This the whole thing is a flat flat temple uh, temple floor. That could have led out uh, right to this track. Unfortunately, uh, it is nothing. It is not a shortcut. But that top part with the temple is probably the only real shortcut in this map. The rest of it is just straight up. You have to be good at drifting if you want to win this race. Um, you can use some drifts on like turns like this to get a really good rocket drift going. Uh, this is another spot where turbo can be used as well. Uh, but once again, you don't want to be in the air too long. But yeah, it's not too bad. This map's really fun. I would definitely give it some practice in, in private like this and just test out uh, the timing of the rocket drifts. Um, cause it, uh, and also, by the way, there is a skip right here. It's really dumb, though. I would probably just use the drift anyway. But the, they do allow for flight around this tree. <laughs> so use at your own risk. I wouldn't really do that, but it is there. All right, Tilted Turnpike is probably the first map in the list so far where we're, where we're really getting into aerial play a lot. Um, there aren't too many skips in this map, but you can't even go to the ground here, so you got to be a little bit careful. Now, flying through here with the straightaway is important. And then doing a tight turn here, you can get on this road, uh, but use at your own risk, as you can see at the tree here. But you can do a drift into this corner. What I wanted to show, though, is if you're really skilled, you could probably go through this doorway. I mean, best of luck with that. Um, but maybe you've noticed this before. There is a boost pad on the top of this rebar right here. I can't consistently get it to work. Uh, it seems really iffy whether or not you're going to hit it. That's the way you can hit it right there. But the car sometimes doesn't react properly if you're moving faster. Um, so use it your own risk. You might hit the rebar and die. There you go. I got it. But also you can see that I was red there. I'm going to die here so I can show you the other direction you can take too from that shortcut. Right here. So down in this spot right here, when you're drifting around this corner, uh, you can get an inline direction with that rebar right here, flying up like that. So that's like probably the way you'd probably want to use it. Um, and then you can also fly around this corner. Um, always use the inner part of this racetrack here. The top part will make you fly off a little bit and also keep you lower. You can also like fly down a little bit faster down here um, and use a turbo if you'd like. Um, and the last spot down on the end here. There is a really, really tricky and silly boost pad that I don't see the use for because it is a tighter turn, but I tend to just hit the, the rock right before it and it doesn't give me the boost pad. This is the one I'm talking about right here. This spot right here. There you go. I just did it. I hit the rock and I didn't get it. You gotta be really careful with how you hit this. It's still probably wise to use this tight turn, but you do have to go through the, uh, the gate here and then you can try to flip onto it, but a lot of the times it just does that. I've also went back here, behind here. It's just not going to be a shortcut, obviously, but it is pretty funny that you can go back there. If you ever want to challenge yourself, feel free to go behind this and uh, try to go around the track like this, um, maybe above it. I don't know, but there's not really many tra um, shortcuts in there. You always want to go under this racetrack, though. All right, anyway, after this straightaway part here, you want to go on the underside because, as you can see to the top left right there, there are boosters under here. Um, so you just want to do the drift as if you're on the top part. It's the same thing. And then you get this boost pad. It's a little bit extra speed and it doesn't sacrifice anything. So definitely worth doing. Um, at the same time here, um, you want to always stay uh, on the side that keeps you tight to the corner here. And that's pretty much the whole race. Nothing too crazy, but that one spot in the city part, you definitely want to utilize that and get that drift around the corner. Um, and then also just fly where you can around the tight corners. That one boost pad is a troll though. Just be careful with it. It usually makes you bonk off of it. All right, welcome to Olympus. Probably where things start to get really interesting for maps and we really need more maps like these. Uh, if you see those tents above, uh, there is a secret up there. Do not try hitting the secret on the first pass through. I will show you at the end of the lap, uh, but there is a way to go above those tents and there's extra two boost pads to use. And it's a little bit cleaner than these bumpy roads, but I wouldn't use it on the first uh, race through here. I'm also just going to quickly get a bunch of uh, turbo so I can show each shortcut 
in its uh, in its full glory. All right, now with full uh, boost, you don't really need to worry about which boost pad you grab here. The higher one might be useful, but you can get down to the ground faster here. Um, so I would just use that one. Um, you're always going to want to use a uh, turbo here, but I'm not going to use them just because uh, I want to show what you can do with stuff later. Um, so up here, you do unfortunately have to go up to the top because there's a gate here. But the second you go around this corner and drift off here, it is actually kind of useful to jump off the wall. Um, and you can use a turbo here to fly across here. There's also, of course, uh, the situation where you can uh, drive across and jump over that corner. Um, that saves a lot of time um, if you have the, bo the boost and turbo to use. Um, same here, you can jump off early and start to uh, fly immediately. It saves you some time. You can either go on top of this or below. doesn't really matter, but once again, you're going to want to use turbo in this if you have the excess. But I would save a turbo for later uh, to really secure the facts. Uh, also, you want to be on the outside here because this is the tightest turn possible. So be on the outside here. Um, this is not a platform, by the way, right here. So don't think it is. The collision is horrible. I have no idea why this is here, but you could definitely jump to it. But once again, you can see that you need to go through this green green gate here, so I wouldn't do it. Uh, from here, though, this is where I wanted to show before. So if you have a turbo, you can make it without a turbo, but it is definitely a lot easier to do it with turbo. Is to fly off here and feather your boost and go up here. And you can sometimes use a front up, upper flip to go above here and get these two boost pads. And the second you fly off here, just flip down to go to the ground and keep your acceleration going. You can see you can keep a good 680 without even using any drifts. And there you go. Pretty cool. Nothing too crazy or interesting, but it is, uh, you know, a little more involved, especially with this jump right here. Um, it saves you a lot of time. I've skipped from like 10th place all the way to first uh, just from doing this jump because everyone's busy going down that corner. I'm going around the corner like this and flying around the corner. It's nice. And you have the extra, extra boost there. Pretty sweet. Oh, Riviera, how I love you. This is one of my favorite maps. Uh, there's crazier skips than this map, but... Uh, this is one of the first maps where there's not always a border around the track, and keep it, keep it, keep an eye out for that in future tracks as well. Um, this border really holds you down, but some maps uh, not so much. So coming through here, the first skip is going to be on top. The regular way is to go under here, um, but up here, and it's a little bit you gotta be a little bit careful with the angle because as you can see, it kind of drives off here. There's some, there's some. Uh, oh, what the heck? As I was saying, you're gonna want to jump up here. And just be careful of this turn. You can see the way the uh, the tracks meet here. And you want to try and get that drift to go off instead. Um, but as we go through the rest of this race, there's going to be some really open areas that you can really use the boost and flying to your advantage um, to get a huge lead on people. Um, and there's definitely... A, it seems to be intentional, some of the spots. Um, the first one's definitely intentional because there's boost pads up there. But right here, up here, and right here. You don't even need, boost, you don't even need a uh, turbo or anything. Uh, but you can definitely use turbo through this whole thing and uh, grab all these boost pads. And then immediately flip down so you make it through. Now, here once again, you can uh, go through here. You can see that they intend for you to jump right through here and fly through. Oops. Well, as I was saying, they intend for you to fly through here. That's pretty tight and difficult. Um, but there is the option to fly over top without even using turbo. So definitely an option for those who are feeling a little more uh, that they don't want to get risky with it. But if you use an upward flip here, you can fly right over. Um, fun fact, this is the first time I've seen a waterfall hide a waterfall. <laughs> Every game hides something behind a waterfall, but I had never expected a double layer of a waterfall. Look at this. Yep, two waterfalls. Hello. Also, I don't know what this guy's doing, but there's an octopus. Anyway, this is where the world kind of becomes your oyster. Because this whole thing is open world, basically. You can kind of come here, and then you can see under here this gate lets you fly out. Um, my car did not know what the heck to do there. Sometimes that happens. Um, but there are options. Definitely don't take the road here. There's so many faster ways um, to go. Definitely uh, up here you can use the platform to reset your jump and your boost if you'd like to. There's probably a way that um, you can jump even earlier. Oh, you do need that that checkpoint. Never mind. You do need this checkpoint. So you need to hit this first. And then you can use uh, this direction right here. You don't even need the ground there. You can just come down to this platform and immediately jump out. Um, same here. Anywhere you want to go. You'd probably land on these if you want to, but I wouldn't really do that. I'd probably just fly in turbo. But if you wanted to and you were skillful enough, you could land on these and reset your jumps so you can get a little bit further. 
you do need to get this checkpoint though there you go so yeah definitely an interesting race uh pretty neat uh options there but you definitely want to do some of those skips at the end with the open world area to uh skip all the track all right curvy canyon 2 definitely gets a little more interesting compared to the original curvy canyon so we've got a booster here and you obviously want to go for this not even a difficult skip uh obviously you can also fly around this corner nothing too crazy so far just going along here two boosters nothing to skip so far Now here's where things get interesting. There is a boost booster in the middle here. You want to grab this. This is 100% the only thing that you can really do uh, to make it faster. If you want to, by the way, you can go on the outside. But uh, this booster right here kind of makes it not worth it. So I would just do that and grab it. There's also a booster on the inside of... Mm, there's not one there. So you can go outside of this if you want. And going outside of this one's not worth it because there are four sets of boost pads along this whole thing right here. So not too many skips. This map's kind of basic. I've tried going outside of this as well. You can if you'd like, but it's a little bit difficult to make make <laughs> useful. And there's also a booster at the very top right there. So not too many skips. It's more so just being skillful and hitting all of them. Uh, but you definitely want to use this uh, booster at the start. All right, welcome to Airborne 2. This is where mechanics really come into play with uh, the flips and stuff. Um, there's lots to do in this map. Like grab this boost pad and this boost, bo boost pad. As well as starting the flight early to grab this boost pad. And I would say this uh, upper area is probably the best. As you get uh, height and a lot of space to drift. I usually take the underside here to grab this boost pad. And immediately start flying upwards to grab these two. And then using the outer ones. The last spot here is flying under this sign. And to the, le uh, to the left side of this, this rock. And then to the right side of this rock. And there we have it. Just to reiterate right away, I'm going backwards here, but this part is never worth going through on Airborne 2 because of the fact that you can't really drift around these without going into the red zone. So unfortunately, you'll always lose speed and it's not even worth grabbing the turbo when you can instead go around that path. So you'd always want to take that path around that corner, go under that sign. Uh, it's much faster. Uh, also, I don't really like the, the right side here because it doesn't really lead you into the right direction. Um, when you boost up to these, you can do this. It's a slightly t uh, tighter turn, so it might be worth it. But I, I just don't know why. I just don't find it comfortable. Maybe it's just me. But uh, it probably is a little bit faster. So I would maybe use the right side. Okay, so Anarchy Arches 2 actually adds quite a few shortcuts compared to the first Anarchy Arches. Um, with some extra platforms and stuff. Um, but also, some of those sh shortcuts kind of line up with uh, don't line up with each other. So you kind of make, make your choices. So this is always going to be the best way to do this. And then flip down to this one. Sometimes your car does act a little little weird though. But this inner part here is always going to be the best uh, skip. And we'll just go up here and do this regularly here. You can go on the outside here. And there's actually some uh, hazards specifically put out here because of that. But it gets pretty wacky out here as you can see. There are boost pads on the inside of the tunnel that can be used. So it doesn't really get you too much time saved. Uh, but here's one of, the, one of the shortcuts that lines up with each other. Uh, right here, you grab the two inline boost pads, then you're forced into the tunnel. What I prefer to do instead is go for this boost pad here, go underneath, and then drive through here. And then as you can see, there's a boost pad down here. It's uh, a lot tighter of a turn and you can utilize um, the tight turns here and hopefully not die as you go around that corner. I just seems better that way. I'm not sure if you guys agree. There's also a boost pad on the line there. I'm just showing you guys I didn't actually do the line properly, but Definitely study the map, uh, give it a go. There's some other ways you can try to go, but I don't think they're as fast. Um, let me know if I miss anything. Um, but that's my favorite route to take, is the way that I just showed there. The other one above forces you into that tunnel, and I don't really like going through that tunnel. It's a little bit difficult. I'll show you what happens if I do that way. Also, just as a note here, if you're going to go through this middle way, I would just either uh, ignore those two or go on the outer one. But I would definitely do the top middle there with the double in line. The reason why I don't like this way is because it requires so much aerial time to get up to this boost pad. And then it's an awkward angle to land here. But even still, you can maybe get a boost pad in here. I'm not sure if it's the fastest way. I think the outer way is probably still faster though. But this turn right here is definitely important to like go for the flight or flight around the corner. I'm not really sure what their thought process was with this hazard here. It kind of does nothing. 
Uh, because even if you want to jump over these, like you can easily jump over them without hitting the hazard. I don't know what they're for. It's kind of silly. It doesn't really uh, <laughs> do much for me. But, you know, creative choice. Okay, dust up two is where things get really intricate and you basically spend more time on the walls than on the floor, uh, which is a little bit crazy. You flip over here and then up, up onto this wall. You go onto this wall here and you kind of want to get to this wall to get this boost. You can do some crazy flips back and forth. Uh, maybe don't die like that though. But yeah, we're gonna grab this boost pad right here and stay stay as tight as possible. And what I like to do is grab this boost pad and then fly up here and grab these two. Down to this one, up to this boost pad, tight around the corner, and try to grab these two inlines. It's kind of hard, but definitely uh, the cleanest. I don't know. You have to test uh, your own for yourself if these are faster on the outside, but I think that the inner ones are probably better. Um, I really don't think the double inlines are worth going on the outside, but definitely give it a try. But what I would probably do is after going through these inlines uh, over here, um, what I would do is fly tight to this wall around this corner like that and grab those down there, but maybe not fail like I just did. Anyway, as I was saying, maybe it's better to just fly around this corner, stay low here and grab these two. I'm not really sure though. And obviously you want to grab these, grab these ones. And there's these undersides as well that you can grab and the outer ones. Uh, and that's the whole thing. Uh, it's definitely mostly wall play with a few moments of being on the ground. But I kind of like this map because it's really intricate. There's so many little movements that you have to make. Um, but I think that it's definitely the most optimal. It just gets really wacky. I'm just going to do it again here because it's, it's very fun. Okay. You see here, you really get a lot of speed. Now, if you use your flip too early, though, you can see you don't really land smoothly on that wall, and you do get a red marker for getting uh, speed loss. But it is, uh, it's definitely a lot of fun. This is a fun one. I missed that outer one. Oops, forgot about that one. Either way, a lot of fun. All right, Puddle Jumper 2 has a lot going on, and it has my favorite shortcut in the game. I hope there's more maps like this in the future, because it, there's a lot of complicated moving parts to this uh, with all the shortcuts. Um, we're going to want to take this upper side here. You're going to see why soon. Uh, we're going to go through the tunnel here and then also use the ceiling uh, to grab this one inline booster. Make sure you avoid that. But then uh, ignore this last tunnel because we're going to fly over here through this guy. There we go. If you do that if you do that well enough, you can also grab that boost pad on the ground. Be careful of drifting here. You can grab here on the ceiling and then flip to the sides. And then you're going to want to come up here and grab this guy. You can come up here and grab this one. Up here, grab these two, and uh, and then make your way down. I obviously did not do that very well, but you're also going to want to go through the inside of these guys. There's also a boost pad on the wall if you can grab it. But this whole thing can be flown around the outside. I'll go do, I'll go do another race around here and hopefully do a couple things more cleanly. Um, there's still so much skill to learn in this game to get really clean and consistent with these, but at least I'm trying it because... Uh, it's definitely difficult. Okay, I just died. <laughs> I don't know why I died. I want to go back and do that again, but that is so weird that I just died. That's the kind of stuff that really bothers me with the collision right now. Sometimes it just feels really unfair that you just die like that. All right, let's give that another try here. Maybe this time I'll land on the far part. So maybe you die on the first like platform. There you go. You can do that. I'm not sure if that was intentional for you to use that, but it definitely is useful. Not the cleanest, but definitely useful. And there we go. And we fly around here. And there we go. There's definitely a lot of ways you can utilize that corner to go around really fast. It's super speedy. It's super useful too. Uh, the more you want to use uh, the flip and aerials and stuff, if you want to reset your boost, just grab onto the wall real quick and flip reset. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's lots to do. There's there's so many different directions. This is the weirdest one to me. I have no idea why this boost pad is here. It's always confused me. I don't know if it's like you fly through here like this and grab it, but it doesn't really make any sense. I have no idea. 
Anyway, onto the last map. All right, and for the final race here, we have Cliff Runner 2. This one's pretty complicated, and it's one of the only maps, I think, that have fully open, uh, open concepts. You're going to want to grab that one boost pad and then this boost pad and come down to the left here and grab this one, and then you're going to want to drift into this last boost pad around the corner. It's definitely the fastest way. Um, and this is where things get really complicated. You can technically fly through all the way around here and up and through there. I don't really remember how I did it the first time, uh, but it's definitely doable. I think I maybe like flew up like here and then went around. It's That's probably the way that I did it when I originally tried it. You basically want to like flip up to the, uh, the rock and then uh, that lets you get a flip reset to go above. It's hard to replicate, but it's definitely worth it. It's the fastest way from what I can tell. Just like that and going around the corner. It's kind of wacky though. This tight turn is also a little weird, but you can get a, a boost up there and then come around. Once again, this is a situation where there's more boost pads this way. And I think this is probably the most efficient way because you want to grab this one and then this one. That way you can save your turbo. But like, like I said, this is all open world. So there's a lot of things you can do. I think the best way here is to actually go... I'll go back here and show you a crazy way you can go. I'll show another example here of why I don't like some of the checkpoints because there's a lot more creative freedom that the players could have. Um, there's a checkpoint that's required right here, but if there wasn't one, you could definitely do something like this where you fly over top. Um, definitely more interesting and uh, would definitely up the skill level a little bit. As far as this map goes, it's still more efficient to go in the middle here, um, but it's a lot more complicated with the rocks. You just got to be careful of that last jump right there. You can even use an upper flip, but you don't want to stay in the air too much. And then, obviously, the most efficient thing is to grab this and then fly through and boost. So definitely the most important thing is to try and practice uh, a good way to get that uh, that track at the end of, like, I mean, not the track at the end. This, like, whole area here, this, this order. And then this part here, it's probably better to, like, fly up. And then fly to the left. And it, sometimes it doesn't work out. I, I, I don't really know a good uh, reliable way to do this yet. Uh, but definitely something like this. And then flying over like this. It sometimes doesn't work if you don't do a proper setup. But definitely give it a try. And uh, get used to a good good method. Because it is very, very fast. I do think this way is better though than the left side. Or the right side. But yeah, I'd love to be able, be able to have more creative freedom. There's a lot of boost pads in that direction over there too, by the way. And I think that's a little bit faster than this way, maybe. There's only two boost pads that you get. So I don't know if it's worth going to the left. There are three in here. So it's really up to you whether you feel like it. You can give it a go on both directions. I wouldn't say either of those are really a shortcut. It's more just a path choice. Um, but give it a go. This one's a little bit nasty because it's like right where the uh, boost pad is. This can lead you in a, into a nice direction here. And then a flip up here will get you over. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Definitely worth experimenting. Uh, that one area is definitely the biggest time save uh, where it's really, really goofy. Uh, but it definitely is worth it if you can get a good consistent way of doing it. Um, I haven't really consistently found a way to do it properly yet. But I thought I'd show it. because, it's, And I just love that. I love that collision. That's great. Um, but yeah, it seems like not using any turbo here and just going up uh, really early is the play. I didn't even get it that time. See, that's how that's how hard it is, but definitely worth it. It gets you around that corner very, very fast. If you ever want to use an open world map, though, or if you ever want to like explore, this is definitely the map to kind of just fly around and experience the the area, because you can do a lot of ex exploration in here. There's no there's no border, but it will send you back to the track after a bit of time. So definitely fun to just fly around though and experiment and see what the map's all about. I tried to see how far I can get. But there's just not collision in some things. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, that was a lot of uh, a lot of talking and a lot of uh, going through a lot of intricate shortcuts. Uh, definitely some interesting ways that you can take. Um, I hope they add more maps where there's a lot more creative freedom because that's where players are really going to excel and, and theory craft. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. That was uh, a lot of shortcuts. I probably missed a couple, so let me know if I missed any. I hope that they add more unique races like this uh, in the future where there's a lot more creative freedom. I love the open world concept where, you know, they can add those checkpoints that you re required to to meet, but let people fly over mountains and find their own routes. 
Uh, but yeah, if you guys want to see more rocket racing content, let me know. Um, but as always, I'm going to keep my Rocket League videos going. But until next time, have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.